Good morning and welcome to Friday's Thought for the Day. Let me pray for us as we begin. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you that uh, he sits on the throne and that he is the one who rules over all things. Uh, we thank you uh, that he cares for us, that uh, we are dearly loved and precious to him. So, Heavenly Father, help us to delight more in him today as we come to his word. For Jesus' name's sake. Amen. So, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 20. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Well, we're into this part of the letter where Paul is beginning to um, have a little think about what his future might hold. He's uh, in prison, obviously, and he's awaiting what seems to be a court case uh, being brought probably before Caesar to determine his future. And very simply, as we'll see, um, over the coming days, he will either be released um, to go on living and uh, having the opportunity to minister and proclaim Christ, um, or he will be condemned to death. And now it appears he's particularly looking forward to that court case. He uh, knows that the Lord Jesus Christ will act for his deliverance, as we saw yesterday, but we don't know exactly what that deliverance will look like. And we're going to see Paul has an inkling of how the future might pan out, but he doesn't know for sure. And he doesn't want those question marks to be a cause for him in any way to lose faith, to lose his courage, to be ashamed. And so as he walks towards that court case, he is prayerful and clearly seeking the prayers of the Philippians that he will not be ashamed, not be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ, not be ashamed of the gospel, but that he will have sufficient courage, courage to uh, stand true to Christ, to not waver. It's wonderful to hear the Apostle Paul speaking like this, isn't it? Sometimes we think he was some sort of uh, superhuman Christian who wasn't affected by the normal uh, fears and vacillations that we all face. Uh, but here he is uh, quite clearly saying, the temptation for me is to be ashamed. Uh, just as he says elsewhere, um, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Again, the implication is that he's tempted to be ashamed and is having to preach the gospel to himself, just as we uh, need to preach it to ourselves, that we would not be ashamed. Uh, we face less life and death type situations. Um, but this is the story of God's people throughout the ages, uh, whether it's uh, the reformers standing up for the faith, um, uh, across Europe uh, in the 16th century. You think of Martin Luther uh, going before the Diet of Worms and uh, saying, um, you know, I can no other, here I stand, uh, full square on the word of God. Um, or the uh, reformers in this country <clears throat> threatened with being burnt at the stake and yet not wavering in their faith. That is the kind of courage that we all long for. Uh, I expect we all wonder what we would do if we were in that position, if we were um, thrust before courts um, to defend our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, just how we would behave. Because Paul longs that Christ will be honoured in him, in his life, um, or even through his death, that he will continue to proclaim Christ and to live for him until the end and never deny his Lord and Saviour. And how will he do that? Well, it's this great conviction of verse 21, which is one that uh, we need to cultivate and assimilate as well. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, Paul perceives that he is effectively immortal uh, until that time appointed for the Lord Jesus to take him home. And therefore he can get on with living for Christ, proclaiming Christ, uh, sharing Christ as he's doing in prison, sharing Christ with the palace guard and others. That is his um, attitude to life in the here and now, that he will go on uh, living for Christ. Because he knows uh, that should they do what humans think is the worst and take that life from him, uh, actually 
he doesn't lose out on anything. In fact, that is better by far, as he will say. To die is gain. To die is to be freed from the shackles of this life, uh, from this mortal body that we inhabit, that uh, um, is so frail and weak in so many ways, and to enter into that new uh, phase of life, face to face with the Lord, being with him uh, for all eternity, knowing him as we are known, seeing as we are seen, uh, the fullness of the experience um, of being with the Lord. Uh, and that is gain. And so Paul can look forward to that with confidence. And that confidence will help to carry him through. I guess we need to uh, think about how we would describe our lives. To live is what for us? It is Christ of supreme importance to us. And to die, to die is uh, unthinkable. Uh, to die is um, uh, a thought I just don't want to go there with. Or to die is gain. Can we truly say that we look forward uh, to dying and going to be with Christ because that will help to shape our priorities in this life to keep him at the center of all we do it's a, a hugely challenging uh, verse uh, one of those ones that's often picked out and put on calendars and those kind of things and trotted out tritely uh, but to really get to grips with verse 21 um, is a huge thing maybe you want to spend time thinking today over this weekend um, how truly you are sent to that but to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for what we see of the Apostle Paul here, uh, his humanity uh, and his faith, uh, his potential weakness uh, and his wonderful strength in you. And Heavenly Father, we crave the same for ourselves. Uh, we pray that we would truly, honestly, wholeheartedly be able to say along with Paul, that to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And we pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.